Hi, it's Shannon, back from houseimprovements.com. And today I want to show you uh, how to remove underlayment. Uh, some people might call it subfloor, but it's really the, there's, a, there's usually a plywood or OSB subfloor uh, on your flooring and then an under, underlayment on top of that, generally. And it's usually maybe a quarter inch thick or five sixteenths. So we're, we're removing it in this case. It was underneath carpet. We're removing it because we want to put hardwood over top this area. Uh, other places you'll find this type of product would be under vinyl flooring or, la or uh, linoleum, uh, just like in the kitchen here. Uh, most times vinyl flooring will not just lift off like this. This one must not have been glued real well. Most times you're going to be scraping and scraping and uh, it's just easier to actually remove this all in one piece. So. Uh, you can, you can do it whether there's vinyl over top of it or whether it's bare, just like what I'm sitting on here. This type of material is usually uh, stapled and nailed, or it'll either be a combination of both or one or the other. This one's got a few tack nails. They must have laid it down, tacked it in place, and then somebody came along with a stapler and stapled it. So uh, you got fasteners in there. We're going to be cutting it into a little bit smaller pieces. You'll find it comes off a lot easier that way than trying to pry it all off and when it's in a big sheet. Uh, when, you, when you try to pry it off without pre-cutting it, you end up breaking it into little wee pieces where more, more often than not, if, if we at least cut it, it'll come up at least in a little bit bigger pieces and be a little less uh, trouble. Uh, so to do that, what I've done is I've taken the, the circular saw and I've set the depth of the blade just basically laid it along an edge like that, set the depth of the blade just deep enough to get through the underlayment that we want to remove. It's all right if you score the subfloor underneath it just a little bit, but you, you want to avoid cutting into the subfloor very much at all. But if it just skims it a bit, a sixteenth, that's not a big deal. Uh, so we're going to do some cuts. When we're doing that, we're obviously could be cutting through nails or staples, so we want to have some eye protection on. Uh, I'm also going to be wearing some earplugs just for the noise. Um, so I'm going to cut it, then I'm going to use a pry bar and a hammer to start peeling up the pieces. And as I go along, there's going to be some staples that pull right through the underlayment and don't come out of the subfloor. So I've got some pliers along with me just to, to pull those out as I go. Um, so we're going to do, do a bit of an area here just so you get the idea of what we do. Um, it's, it's pretty basic, but uh, sometimes seeing something done just helps you out. So I'm going to get my safety gear on and make some cuts. So with my cuts, what I do, these materials are usually 4x8 sheets as well. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that. And most of the stapling generally is going to be around the perimeter. So what I'll do is I'll run my saw for about 8 inches from the edge of the perimeter of all the sheets. So I'll go all the way around and then about every couple feet, I'll also cut across the sheet. So that'll just uh, make it a little bit easier to get up usually, uh, at least in a, a few less small pieces. So get my earplugs in and I'm going to cut. And I'm also going to wear some gloves as well, just for the bits of staples that can be flying off of the blade. So you can see right, this is just a small piece here. This is actually a 4 by 8 sheet. So I'll do my demonstration on this full sheet just so you can see. Okay, so there's the cuts that I've made. Uh, another item you might want to have on is a dust mask as well when you're doing the cutting. Uh, just this is basically most of these materials are made out of uh, compressed sawdust, really, so it can be kind of fine dust. So I've got my cuts made. Right along here is the joint in the sheets, and these are my saw cuts. So I'll just start right on this corner. It's usually helpful if you can start at a doorway. It's just easier to get under the edge of the sheet to get going. So you just start your bar under there. And 
and uh, I like to have a garbage can close by. Some of the smaller pieces can go straight into it. So we get your first one out of there. There's a nail that didn't come up. Pull it out and just keep going. bigger pieces I usually just stack into piles uh, just because they clog up the, the uh, garbage pail right away. So you can see as we've gone along, I'm not sure, maybe you can't see them. You can see that there's the odd staple, nail, whatever, that's still left behind. So I just go along with the pliers and pull that out right now while, I'm, while I can see them. When I sweep up and clean up, you'll generally come across the odd one that you missed. If you get the majority of them out now while you're already down here, it just makes it a little easier on you. So you go along and just kind of pull those out as you go. So you can see that making the cuts definitely helps in getting a little bit bigger pieces. Otherwise you're trying to pry up a whole sheet that's nailed down and uh, it usually just breaks into real small pieces. So I'll just go along here, peel a couple more out. You can see now that I've got it started, I'm not even using the hammer for the most part. So once you've got a piece kind of started, you can also get your hand under there and just help to pull it up. That'll also help the pieces to be a little bigger. So I've worked my way over to the next sheet and uh, that next sheet I didn't cut because I thought I'd just kind of show you what happens when you try to pry on a full sheet. So I'll just start here and you'll just you'll see it generally just wants to break into small pieces. how that wouldn't be a lot of fun if you can get it up into a even pieces like this as opposed to stuff like that it's just going to go a lot quicker a lot less mess so uh, basically that's how I would remove underlay underlayment sorry um, and like I said if you had vinyl flooring you could do the exact same thing just set the saw cut right through the vinyl uh, you could could try to peel the vinyl off if it comes off as easy as the stuff we've seen here, but uh, generally it won't come off that quick and easy. So I just cut right through it. I can use, uh, you know, if you're around some uh, cabinets, because this usually was put down before any cabinets were in the way. So if you're leaving the cabinets in place, you could use a recip saw, reciprocating saw, to cut around the front edge of the kick of the cabinets and that sort of thing. Uh, they also have those little orbital saws now. Uh, kind of oscillating they would work I think all right for that too so it would cut it free so that you could remove all that from the main part of the room and relay whatever you're going to put down so this is a nice short video um, don't forget your safety gear it's pretty important here because you're dealing with a lot of staples and dust and that sort of thing um, uh, yeah and your ear production <laughs> so anyways you can check out uh, this this video obviously you watched on YouTube you can uh, subscribe to our channel or just go there and watch any of the videos we already have posted as well. Uh, you can check us out on houseimprovements.com. There you can find articles. Uh, you can also find our forum at the website where you can ask any questions or look around. Maybe uh, somebody's already asked those questions and the answers are there for you. Thank you for watching. <laughs>